Hey everybody. Today's topic is fuel systems and fuel pressure on the Tuneport 305 Chevy or 350. Uh, back when I first uh, was repairing and replacing the engines on the uh, Camaro, and I say engines because uh, those of you who know the story know I the first one failed after only about a couple of hours, literally, and uh, less than 20 miles of driving and less than three hours of running, uh, based on um, a crack that was a crack in the block that had been missed by the in the rebuilding process. During the time that that engine was being diagnosed, I I was running the gamut of a lot of different things, and. I was scrambling so fast that even though I've been putting things on YouTube for a while, sometimes you got to get the work done and there's not time to video if you're working alone. And uh, I, was, I was really scrambling trying to understand what was the matter with that engine. Um, in the process, um, I had a brand new fuel system, I thought. I mean, I put in a new tank, a new pump, but uh, because the engine was running bad, I, I needed to do some diagnosis. And since I didn't show you that, I thought maybe I would take the opportunity now. Uh, the reason it comes up now is that someone who's following the channel asked me a question about a problem they're having with their car, with their tune port, uh, where they're having trouble with, uh, with it starting. And it seemed to be uh, tied to fuel, possibly tied to fuel pressure and even fuel prime. So, first of all, if you're going to going to diagnose one of these you need a fuel pressure gauge uh, high pressure um, high pressure pressures are all relative um, the old pressure gauge for a carbureted car that sees uh, five six seven psi uh, won't do it you need one that's good for about forty in this car forty or fifty psi some of the newer cars have even higher pressures but um, i went to harbor freight and bought one of their pittsburgh brand and, and um, came up with a fitting, um, an attachment uh, that would go to the uh, fuel rail on this car. And uh, I'll show you how that works in a minute. Um, but down in the back of the tune port on the fuel rail, um, there is a fitting that you can attach pressure gauge to. And then you can work through the trouble trees in the service manual and determine whether you have a bad pump, a bad filter, uh, a bad regulator, or something wrong with the tubing. Um, you know, that kind of runs down the gamut of things. And this pressure gauge helped, me assure, helped assure me that my fuel system at the time was working fine. And, uh, and that ruled out that. And then I was working through other diagnostics as well. So... I'm going to take a minute here and get this, uh, I'll show you how this gets hooked up and uh, we'll make a, there's nothing wrong with the Camaro today, uh, but I'll just take this opportunity to show you how this works. On the tuned port, you're on the right hand side here. This is the, this is the fitting on the fuel rail right here and it has a cap on it that you can just unscrew. It's a, keeps the dirt out of the fitting and prevents any leakage. You want to be careful you don't lose the cap. Now the way this works is your system starts with a fuel pump back in the tank and that feeds high pressure up to the fuel rails. It comes up through a set of hoses right here from the back of the car and these jumper hoses come in here to this manifold and feed underneath underneath the upper radiator hose into those two fittings and so I believe you'll find that the larger tube down there feeds in to the end of the fuel rail assembly and that if you trace back to the fuel regulator that the smaller line comes off the fuel pressure regulator and heads back to the tank. 
this is what it looks like in the book. So you'll see that you got a um, you have an in tank pump. It picks up, feeds into the line through the fuel filter, down through those flex hoses into back into steel lines, and then uh, the feed goes into the end of the right hand rail, and the uh, overage comes out of the, and, and feeds back through the other tube and heads back to the tank. Now, also, that pump is fed or is powered um, through a relay there on the right there on the front front of dash and as I showed you a minute ago there's a, the fuel fitting on the other side for measuring pressure which is which is shown right there so I'm going to set the camera down for a minute and uh, and connect the uh, connect the pressure just a minute all right I kind of ran out of hand so here's the connection here's my fuel pressure fitting I screwed that on there I did un I did uh, slide off this vacuum hose to give me room um, I can put it back on again but it's just easier to get access and that vacuum line is the one that r runs to the uh, pressure regulator and will reduce your fuel pressure at idle. Uh, the way this works is that you know you have fuel pressure fed in into the rails until it hits a certain pressure point and then that regulator opens and it sends the excess fuel back to the tank through the other line. And when you when you uh, crank the system, I've already done it once, but uh, when you turn the key to on you will get a two second run of the fuel pump and then it times out and if it doesn't see the distributor turning and making pulses for ignition like that you're cranking uh, then the fuel pump will stop and so I'm gonna go ahead and do that I thought I had it set to show you already and I made a mistake and didn't have the camera turned on guys Okay, that's the fuel pump priming, and she's done. Two seconds and off. What I'll do if the car's been sitting is I'll go ahead and, and turn it to on and let that prime happen, and then, and then go to start after it's had a couple of seconds to come up and charge. So at this stage, with a fresh prime on it, so what have I got? About 40... 44 PSI. Alright, I got 44 PSI off the prime that seems to be holding. And if I go to the book, it should be between 40 and a half and 47, so 44 ish is, is good. And these charts assume that you don't have a fuel system diagnostic code. But that's the main main thing that you want to have is you want to be able to prime, come up, and get fuel pressure, and it should should hold. Then, if you went and started the engine and let it idle, it should drop by somewhere between three and ten because you'll have vacuum on the regulator. This tree will help you troubleshoot that one and tell you you know if you, if you got vacuum on it and it doesn't come down you probably have a bad diaphragm in your regulator and you need to replace it or you have a bad regulator we'll just say that if you get over to the other side here and you say you have pressure and it's bleeding down too quick uh, you can go over here to these hoses find the one that goes back to the tank and pinch it off and if you pinch it off and then it holds, you can say, oh, I got a, again, I've got a bad pressure regulator. If it's not holding with it pinched off, then your, in, one of your injectors or even your cold start injector could be bleeding off and, um, and dropping fuel into a cylinder. And the, 
prime test for that would be to go pull out your spark plugs and see if one is fouled or wet. Um, they've got a whole separate procedure over here for if you really want to get into it to to um, to partially removing the fuel rail to see if you have a dripping injector. And then over on the other side there's one if you just don't get pressure at all then you want to go back and make sure you got pressure um, you want to make sure you have voltage back to the pump you know is the pump running or not when I first bought this car the gas tank was in bad shape and I tried to power up that fuel pump and she was stuck solid and there was um, I got power to it but it wouldn't turn and so I had to put in a new pump on the other hand if the pump runs and you don't have pressure then there's a fuel filter that's underneath the floor pan in the back and you could have a, either a plugged inline filter, a plugged inlet filter, or a restricted fuel line. Um, or if, if, the, if none of those things um, pan out you could just have a bad pump. The pump is running and just not making pressure. I mean that's kind of a high level. I'm not going to go through everything but um, but these are the charts that you got in the fuel, fuel um, in the service manual. You have a second chart that if your pressure is low or too low or too high, then there's a separate chart back here, this seven A seven B that would help walk you through that. So that pretty much covers us for the moment. Just one final and follow up point on the fuel pressure. Um, I left the gauge sit all night and you can see right now that the pressure is what? About um, only 2 or 3 psi. So it bled down from 40 psi overnight. Now if I believed the book completely I would think it should hold pressure indefinitely and it should never bleed down. You know, the question is, where, is the, where does the fuel go? Is, is the check valve on the fuel pump bleeding just a touch? Is the um, pressure regulator bleeding just a touch? Or do I have a leaking injector or whatever? In this case, I will tell you is this is consistent. When the engine was brand new, freshly overhauled fuel injectors. They had just come out of the box. They were tested. I had them rebuilt and so I know they sealed off I had a brand new fuel pump and I know it sealed off I mean I expect that it should have um, but I wondered I, I when I looked at the pressure regulator valve down under the back you know back in the beginning Delco uh, Rochester products the folks that designed that made it not said it was non-serviceable when you bought a new one you had to install a pressure regulator valve that they had assembly that they had built and tested and certified presumably that it didn't leak and they didn't want you just replacing the diaphragm now you know fast forward 30 years now you don't have a choice they don't make it anymore and so you replace the diaphragm and the valve and my sense is that it's possible that when you put in a replacement uh, diaphragm that it maybe doesn't seal up as well as the original one did. I've, I don't have any way of knowing but um, all I would suggest is that maybe some level of leakage uh, slow bleed down might be um, not um, unreasonable if you've got a rebuilt system like this. I just don't know what the number is. The factory says it shouldn't leak down in the in the book but they don't ever put a spec on you know how much is not bleed down right in in my case you know it's probably gee, it's probably losing a couple psi an hour and that's not a whole probably a whole lot of fluid so just keep that in mind as you're doing the diagnostics